isn't it the greatest opportunity to see ourselves fall so we can pick ourselves up again? It's gonna be bright. It's gonna be so, so bright. Bright, shiny. Bro, what are you doing? Why aren't you up yet? We, we promised ourselves we'd be up. Why are you hiding under the covers? Okay. I know the drill. So you feel stuck like crap and you want to disappear into a hole. Maybe you're thinking, what am I doing with my life? And the answer is nothing at all. Hey, this is Oni. Uh, AKA Peter Clampton, the most famous, incredible writer whose books you probably have never read or heard about before. What is up? And today I just wanted to talk about what it's like to be in a rut and how to get yourself out of a rut. So one of the biggest things I think that struggle, like I personally struggle with today is, you know, I look online and I see just like what everyone's doing and I recognize like, okay, this is everyone else's highlight reel, but Sometimes I feel like I'm fundamentally not doing enough and it makes me feel like I'm irrelevant and like my goals are unattainable or even worse, like they don't matter. What's wrong? I was looking at the goals for my journal last year and I didn't get any of them accomplished. You're upset. You're, you're, listen, bro, I get it. You're depressed and you're upset, but we've had this conversation. You're old, you're poor, right? Family doesn't like you, I'm alone. And generally, there's a lot of things to work on, but you know what you need to do. I do. Um, as you can see there, I was having a conversation with myself and was just having a tough time getting out of bed. And I, I've been there before, right? Now, if you follow me or know me personally, you probably will know that I'm someone who's always pretty, pretty goal oriented and I'm always trying to like go for that next horizon. But you also know if you know me that I chronically fall short of my goals. However, recently I started making goals and being able to keep little things as I was pulling myself out of ruts, right? Because oftentimes it's not our performance toward moving towards the goal that's the problem. It's what happens when we're impeded from it, you know, when we get hit. How do we recover and bounce back? But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. And so I say with the first advice, you have to decide what the truth is. And what I mean is say, for instance, if you know, okay, let's say I want to get a YouTube channel and say, get a thousand subscribers, you have to decide like, okay, how much time is it going to take to do that? What's the type of work that's going to do there? Right. And you have to make that decision. Now, whether or not what you, the truth you decide is true is not the thing. Right. That's important. It's important that you just decide whatever it is. Right. And you decide, OK, I've decided that in order to get a thousand subscribers based off of my research and everything that I know. And if you haven't done that, I don't. That's silly. You should be researching and trying to understand what it is you're trying to do. But after you've made that decision, you have to decide, okay, this is the plan. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do it. And recognize that even though some, some, it might not feel like things are going to plan, oftentimes, especially when things are incremental and building out, they are going to plan, right? And the immense surges we're looking for, oftentimes, they take... They take a long time, a lot of experience to get. And especially when we're going into something new, you don't have the knowledge to be able to predict from here what things are gonna be like over here. There are these two different states because like it would be a really crazy person to keep trying to do something that wasn't working and still feel hopeful and motivated by it. Now sometimes this can be admirable like what you see in like a lot of animes where you have that like indomitable shonen character who keeps going it. But most of the time it's stupid. Right. 
and generally what we see is what we see is that we react or change what we're doing based off of the stimuli what's coming in so if we see that something's good and something's working we get more and more motivated to go for it but if we do something and it's not working and we don't get that we get less and less motivated the issue is is so many of us now we don't have to delay gratification we always need that quick hit and so because of that a lot of the times we can't give things enough time that's needed in order to produce the results we need and i found before this is what really used to kill me but as I got a little bit older and slowed down a bit, one of the things I saw that as I stuck with things, eventually I started getting a semblance of the results I wanted. And it was this that began to encourage me. And it's figuring out how to take care of those things first. So specifically for me, when I'm in a rut, like I was this week, oftentimes it's because like I'll feel like I'm not getting enough done, like my schools are, I've never been working, I'm like a loser, right? And then I'll recognize that what's happening is I've had this dialogue implanted in my head where basically I feel like I'm worthless and I'm a loser. And I think that way because I was told that half my life, right? I recognize that's not true, right? But that's something that has come with me, right? That is just, that's just something I have right but i can see that and recognize okay when that goes off and when that's speaking that's not speaking the truth that's just that voice that i have and i know that about myself now so now i can move forward past that and there's a lot of times when we kind of have to d figure out these little things about ourselves when we recognize okay what i'm seeing is actually real true here or what I'm seeing is just a part of me that it's not necessarily broken, but it's coming from this different aspect. And it's true, but it's not the true in the way that this other thing is true. So it's true that I might have thoughts that are negative, but it's not true that those negative thoughts are actually who I am. Versus when I have thoughts about what I want to become and what I'm going to do, I can decide that, hey, those thoughts are the ones. Um, that actually reminds me of a story. I don't know. This is a pretty popular story. It's a Native American legend about the two wolves, right? You have the wolf that is, you know, the light wolf, and then you have the dark wolf. And these, actually, you know, I don't like that saying of light and dark. Let me figure something else. Okay, you have the good wolf, and you have the bad wolf, right? So the good wolf, which may be light or dark, depending on who you are, and the bad wolf, which may be light or dark, depending on who you are, are at war with each other inside of the human heart. And the idea is that the wolf that survives is whichever one you feed, right? So if you feed the gold wolf, the good part of you is the part that's going to come out. And if you feed the bad wolf, the bad wolf is going to be the part that comes out. So in deciding what is true, you have to decide which who's the beast I'm going to get behind. And that's what's ultimately going to prevail. Did you get to sleep on time? No. What, were you up all night looking at your phone again? Yeah. How about, did you eat anything? No. Sounds like your basics aren't taken care of. After you've decided what is true, what isn't true, the second thing you need to do, and you need to start doing is building that foundation. And it's building the habits for that, right? Because recognize the reason you fell into the rut is because your floor wasn't there and you fell in the cracks. Because that's, you know, that is what a rut is, right? That's why they call it that. And so ultimately getting yourself out of the rut is you've got to fill in the rut of whatever it was. Then I feel like the things you need to do is you need to fundamentally get habits that support whatever good is in you right and i think those habits in terms of priority um, are sleep shelter food finance then friends and family and the reason i say that is because of uh, maslow's hierarchy maslow's hierarchy basically says in order to fully actualize yourself you have to start from this baseline of having your core basic needs met. So food, physiological needs, then eventually you go to safety needs, then eventually you have your relationship needs, then you have your esteem needs based off of your well-being and who you are. Then finally, at the tip top, you have your self-actualization. And you can't skip these things, right? Just like you can't build a house without a foundation, you're not going to be able to reach your dreams and become like a multi you know, gazillion dollar author or best-selling animation director if you're truly struggling and trying to eat. And I've been in those situations. And I think one of the biggest things that kind of helped me, especially the last year and a half, two years, as I've gotten myself out of the rut, 
was focusing on the most important things first. It's funny because there's people who have access to these things, because there's people who have access to these things, but because they don't have those habits and those priorities set, they constantly undermine their own success. And that was like the, that was the story of my life for the first, you know, seven years after high school. I was constantly undermining my success because I didn't have those basic habits. So have your shelter place, know where you're going to sleep, be safe. You know, obviously if you're homeless, that's like your first priority is get in a place where you're not going to freeze to death because if you're homeless, depending on who you are, why you're homeless, you're in a rut, right? But there's some people, you know, they opt for that and you know, that's a different thing based off of their mission. Anyway, so there was a time when I, I was so depressed. The only thing I felt like I could do was go to my room, just the bathroom, and then go back to my room and that's all I could do. But because, you know, I had that one basic need, right? You know, I had to use the bathroom. I started piggybacking off of that. So I'd tell myself, okay, if you get up, eat an apple, right? And then eventually, you know, I ran out of apples, so I had to go to the store. So I said, okay, well, every time I ran out of apples, I'm going to go to the store. Then I started going to the store, and then, you know, I started buying some good food that I want to eat. And I was like, okay, well, when I get up, I'm going to start trying to eat good food or start drinking more water and then a little bit before you know it you start piggybacking off of all these good ideas and eventually you have something really substantial and this really helps you in the long run because as you're piggybacking off of habits this is where your foundation comes right and that's how it's built and you realize that these things actually build onto another so when you take care of your shelter it gets easier to sleep and then when you get sleep it's easier to find and eat food right when you have food you have the energy and the things you need so you can start building your finances and start you know actually taking care of that aspect and then once you have finances right and you have that sort of certainty of knowing your living situation and everything is taken care of it gets easier to build friends right and to build relationships and then from those relationships you build you grow you're able to strengthen yourself and from that you know then you can build and do whatever the heck you want after that right so you know if you have a place to live right and you know you got a place to sleep and you got food but you're like oh man like like I'm still scatterbrained well just ask yourself are your habits in place for that if you have a place to live okay sweet you got that taken care of but how's your sleep you're getting the right amount of sleep you need and are you sleeping at the times you need to, right? Not everyone's a day person, not everyone's a night person. Like you just gotta decide who you are. You gotta decide what is true, but then whatever that is, you just need to do it consistently. And that's so important how that consistency and that routine is so important to getting yourself of whatever rut you are and establishing that foundation. So really the biggest thing from to take from that is you just need to build those habits and keep layering those habits on until you take care of your basic fundamentals. For me, it starts with two S, three S, right? Shelter, sleep, food, finances, friends and family. Friends slash family, right? Then boom, you're done. Okay, so now that we know what it is, we've already made the plans and stuff. We just need to do it. So get your sleep in order, right? Let's focus on some food and get that phone away from you after that end. It's just so much though. I'm just exhausted. And then that leaves us to the third thing. And this is the most important thing is you have to just keep doing it, right? Like consistency is key, right? Like keep doing what you said you're going to do as long as you're going to do it. Recognize that when you're talking about things like food, sleep, shelter, all these things of keeping yourself out of the rut, these are lifestyle things. And I know when you're in the rut, especially when you're depressed and you're exhausted, even thinking about making your life better is exhausting and it just feels terrible. It, when you start anything out, right, it's really, really tough at first. And sometimes it takes so much energy to do the most basic things. And sometimes it feels like you'll never get there and you just feel super crippled, right? And that's where you have to have a lot of belief in the process and you need experience and time to even breathe, right? There's always these really basic things that you weren't always able to do, but now you do without even thinking about it. Another good analogy is if you guys have seen The Karate Kid, right? You'll know that at first, the main character, he gets told to do all these really, really basic tasks. Like, you know, um, I remember him having to paint a fence and like wash the car and do all these basic things, right? And then he's like, man, when do I get to the good stuff? I wanna like learn how to fight and stuff, right? 
And then when Mr. Miyagi goes and challenges him, the kids got the basic motions down, right? And it was through that monotony, that chore of doing those boring, annoying things day by day that he was able to get his foundation so that he had the ability to really expand and become like the karate kid. And that's just the same in your life. If you want to do anything to really take care of yourself, you have to have your foundations out. That doesn't mean your foundation's going to look like everybody else's, right? Your foundation might look different, right? Because your rut might look different than everybody else's. And, but the most important thing is just making sure that you have those truths decided and settled and that you're living up to them. And then, um, and this is kind of a bonus tip, but I think it's also being flexible to recognizing like what's working and what isn't. Sometimes we'll try to push things, right? And the reason we'll get in a rut is because we're unwilling to change or compromise when we see that something isn't working or that that's not the way it needs to be. And so sometimes it's recognizing like what's happening as a result of my lack of discipline, my lack of focus, and where do I just need to double down on my commitment versus what is happening as a result of, you know, it's just not working and it's not your fit. And a good example of that is that sometimes what was what might traditionally be considered the parameters for success are not going to be what makes it for you. The best and most favorite example of this is my favorite basketball player, Dwayne Wade. Now, by all accounts, he's what many he's who many people consider the third best shooting guard of all time, right? And that's only behind Michael Jordan, who many people consider the best player of all time, and then Kobe Bryant, the late great Kobe Bryant. <sighs> Too soon. So Dwayne Wade's the third best shooting guard of all time, right? But compared to like what is considered a shooting guard, right? A shooting guard needs to be able to shoot the ball. But anyone who knows Dwayne Wade knows that, especially from deep, from three point, he was a terrible three point shooter. So how do you go basically the one thing shooting guards need to do is be able to shoot the ball well. And how do you go to being the third best of all time and be terrible at that? Well, it's because he could do all this other stuff. Play. Wade with Wade. Listen in. What a shot by Dwayne Wade. Here's Wade off the pump fake. The wild spinner drops. There it is. Fans have been waiting for a play like that. Finish Dwayne Wade. Because Dwayne Wade understood his game and he was confident and mature enough to live in that and learn how to master that, he was able to get to the point where he was extremely effective with it. The biggest thing is like, you guys, you've just got to commit. And then once you commit, check it out, but then be flexible. Is the promise that we will evolve and that what was hard will eventually be simple for us. The capacity to become great is within all of us. I think to ourselves, isn't it the greatest opportunity to see ourselves fall so we can pick ourselves up again? Think about that. Ready to get up then? I can do that. All right, let's go get it. My final words, I just want to remind everyone that every success starts with suck. Good luck picking yourselves up and remember there will be better days ahead. This is Oni Onyabur, AKA Peter Clamding, reminding you to stay happy and stay healthy. Peace, guys. Like and subscribe.